Hey guys, we're live for Dolls and Devs. This is a very special event, so thank you guys for joining us. We have with me Spectra from the Frag Hello. Doll team. Say hi, yay, thank you. Yay. I'm Saber from the Frag Dolls, by the way, if you didn't know. And we're also joined by Mark Thompson, one of the dev team guys from Far Cry 3. Say hi. Hello, hi. <laughs> awesome, well, thank you for joining us. Very, very special Dolls and Devs. Um, we're really excited to show you guys some of the single player campaign exclusive gameplay from Far Cry 3. Obviously, it's before the game comes out. The game comes out actually next week. So, we're showing you some really cool stuff that nobody's seen yet. So, again, thank you for joining us. So, you are the level design director. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, that's right. And what does that entail? What do you do? Um, I. I tell a bunch of level designers what to do um, is the super boring version. Um, it's so it's, it's my job to um, so the creative director he's the kind of the I guess the visionary behind the game. He decides at a super high level what the game is about in terms of themes and tone and kind of um, the overall style. Um, and then it's my job to figure out what that means in terms of level design, which is so if he if he comes and tells me, hey Mark the game is about insanity, then I have to figure out what an insane island looks like um, and how that feels and what an insane mission is. Um, and um, it's my job to figure out from the story um, what parts of it will be playable. Um, so somebody writes the script, the script writer, he figures out what the story will be. And then um, it's my job as level design director to figure out how to make that into a series of playable missions so it's um, not just a story and it's actually an interactive experience that players can have. And, um, I'm, really, uh, I'm really keen on as a level designer. I, I love it when a, game, when a game's environment tells its own story, when it feels like a real place that people have lived in and you know, things have actually happened there. Um, and it's, it's something that we really pushed a lot on FC3. We wanted, we wanted people to have the impression that the island wasn't just built by a bunch of level designers and artists. It was actually a real place that existed for thousands of years, and you know, different people have lived there at different times. And we kind of we uh, we scattered all of these different pieces of history around the island, so that when you play the game, you can actually stumble across um, a, a letter that somebody wrote in World War II, and you can kind of you can read the story of this one guy's experience about a general that went crazy and started to kill all of his troops. Wow. That's so cool. It sounds so eerie. The island always, um, it's, it's generally bad for everyone that goes there. Apart from Vas, who really gets a kick out of it. That, that seems to be the case. The little that I've played so far, um, there's definitely tones of like insanity and people are a little crazy there. Yeah. And, uh, I, I don't, don't know, know who to trust. No, that's I, everybody true. Everybody creeps me out. Everybody seems <laughs> like they're going to screw me over. Everybody seems like... I get really freaked out because I don't know, like, is this person on the level or are they sending me on this crazy mission to, you know, to, to my death? Like, I don't trust anybody. It's... Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. That, that's good. That's good. That was the intention. So it kind of, that, that paid off. Yeah. And I also am really scared to go into the jungle because I keep getting attacked and it's scary. I'm scared to go in the water. I'm scared to go in the jungle. I don't trust anybody. Oh, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I hate water already in games. Like I, it's like my big fear in playing video games is playing in water in video games. And there's tons of water in this game, so it's yeah. Uh, scary. And there are ton, ton, tons of sharks in the water as well. Yeah, that's yeah. what I know. So, um, what is the graphic engine that you've used for this game? Uh, we use uh, an internal engine. It's called uh, Dunia Engine. It was uh, the engine was first used on Far Cry 2. Um, and then we, we kind of we spent a lot of time and effort upgrading it between Far Cry 2 and 3 so we could do a bunch of different things. Like uh, Far Cry 2 didn't really have any interiors and we knew that we, we wanted to do uh, temples and we wanted to do caves and stuff like that. Um, so we wanted to be able to send people underground and really kind of explore and get a kind of um, exploration of tombs and a little bit of that island history I was talking about. So we really we pushed the engine so we could do uh, complex interiors with um, with dynamic lights and things like that. So that was a that was a big improvement we we made to the engine. Well, one one thing that Far Cry does as a series is that it doesn't really uh, it it isn't linked narratively. So we don't take one character um, or one setting from the one game to the next um, like other franchises do. Uh, what we do is kind of we more loosely take the idea of uh, an FPS 
in a very very open environment. That's, I think that's kind of that's kind of the trademark of Far Cry, rather than a single person or a single um, in, environment. It's more the idea that it it isn't linear, it isn't scripted, um, it isn't uh, military, and it isn't in a series of uh, brown corridors. It's really about a huge, uh, beautiful, natural open landscape, um, and you have a bunch of tools, and there's a lot of emergent dynamic content that you can cause a lot of trouble in. Um, Sometimes it's scary, sometimes it's fun, um, and you can set a lot of stuff on fire. You don't need to have played the, the previous games to jump into Far Cry 3. Far Cry 3 is really about, it's, a, it's the story of Jason Brody, and he comes to the island and the world of Far Cry not knowing what it is. So it's, it's, actually, it's actually perfect. If you haven't played the game, any of the games before, you're pretty much exactly like Jason is. So when he lands on yeah. the island um, and he gets captured by us, that's pretty, much, that's pretty much the same story as the player. Um, so it's it's kind of nice in that way. We have a few Easter eggs for the fans. So if you're a, if you're a fan of Far Cry One um, or Far Cry Two, you're going to notice a few nods and winks um, and some uh, some like hidden messages that we put around the island in in certain places. So okay. this is so the the island when you arrive there, it's under the control of uh, Vas and his pirates. Um, and so what that means is when you move around the world, you might be attacked. Um, you might see roadblocks when you try and drive around. Um, and this was a feature that was in Far Cry 2, um, and it was a feature that a lot of people complained about because the, uh, the checkpoints would respawn, and you, know, you, would, you would clear out an area, and you would go back 30 seconds later, and everyone would be back again. Um, yeah. And it, you know, it, it frustrated some people, and it was one of the things that we, uh, we wanted to address with 3. So we came up with the idea of an outpost. So when you, when you kill all of the enemies in the outpost, you actually capture it, you take it over, and it becomes yours. And the uh, the Rakyat, who are basically your your allied friends, they come in and uh, hold the outpost for you, and then that part of the island becomes friendly. So when you move around, you won't see roadblocks, you won't be attacked. Um, you'll actually see friendly people. You'll see uh, neutral villagers driving around, living their day-to-day -day lives, um, and you won't be attacked by enemies anymore. So uh, if you if you take all of, like we have 36 of these outposts in the world, and you can take them all back. Um, and essentially make the island uh, a friendly place again. What's the best way for me to not set off an alarm? <laughs> um, so the the alarms you can you can tackle them in a bunch of ways. What we what we try to do in in FC3 is as much as possible promote all of the different kinds of gameplay. So yeah. we know that some play some players like to be very very stealthily and sneak around. Um, execute everyone, disappear like they were never there. And other people, uh, like Max here is demonstrating, they like to set everything on fire, <laughs> including, including themselves, um, and, and, and unload uh, AKs and guys uh, at close range. Um, so we try to, even with the alarm, we try and support all different kinds of gameplay. So you can, uh, you can, you can crouch and sneak undetected towards an alarm and you can disable it um, up close and that will be completely silent or you can um, actually you can actually shoot an alarm panel from distance and that will yeah. disable it but if okay. you do that obviously it's going to make a noise and the the enemies are going to go into search mode to try and look for you they won't know where yeah. you are yeah. they won't be able to call, call for reinforcements but they'll know there is a threat in the area so they'll go and investigate my personal favorite tactic is to uh, i like to sneak in disable the alarm and then put a proximity mine just next to the alarm because the oh, the, the, the the pirates don't know when you've disabled an alarm so yeah. if you like you can you can rig the area with a mine and then you can just make a noise so they run over to the alarm and then it'll explode and it'll kill a bunch of guys the whole idea of the crafting system is that you have to go out and you have to learn how to use the jungle so every, everything you need is on the island um so we we have plants that you can collect make medicine um we have all the animals. You need to go and hunt the animals, uh, learn how to kill animals so you can skin them. And you can use those skins to uh, craft better equipment. So when, you st when you start the game, for example, you can only carry one weapon. And it's, uh, it's fine. You could probably finish the game. I mean, I didn't. But you could probably finish the game with just one weapon. But it really doesn't give you any tactical flexibility. Yeah, like when you, you have when, to when you, really, yeah. It's, you have to think about exactly like what you're going to do because you only get yeah. one weapon. At least in the sure. beginning, if... I finally found out how to get two weapons. <laughs> I'm like, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> how do you yeah. get two weapons? Crafting. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, you have to go and you have to um, craft uh, another gun holster. So you can carry <gasps> Oh. Yeah. Okay. At least that's what but I if found. You, uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> if you if you don't like if you don't like water and you don't like sharks, you might have a tough time getting the fourth weapon slot because you need two shark skins to uh, be able to get that fourth holster. Seriously? It gets it gets it gets progressively harder the more the more the, the deeper into the crafting system you go to really yeah. max out all of the equipment. Um, we're going to ask you to uh, do some pretty tough things. And I'm really satisfied with the run option, like because it's I just turn around and just start booking it. <laughs> Sometimes I'm looking <laughs> over my shoulder, but normally my first response. It's, when I'm getting attacked or anything, is just to get the heck out of there and I start running. And then I turn around and assess the situation and see what's coming after me, but... Yeah, I'm no. enjoying the run button. And you know what I like is, um, when you play Jason, the main character here, um, I, I like that he's so vocal. Like, when he starts running, he's, like, panting. He's like, I am yeah. not fit. I am gonna keep going, but, like, you can hear him really start breathing and he's like cursing and he you know you really kind of get in the character when you yeah. play that way and um, when you like skin an animal he's like ew gross at first you know it's oh, really yeah. cool it's like being a part of a movie like more so than i've ever felt in any other video game yeah pretty... well what we did was um we like we, we sat down as a group of people and we just we played the game and then whenever anyone in the room said something we were like, okay, okay, write that down. That can be what Jason says. So the first time someone saw the, we saw the skinning animation, we were like, oh, oh it's horrible. And we were like, yeah, Jason, Jason would probably say that. So we, uh, that's kind of how we wrote Jason, a lot of Jason's monologue lines, as we call them. Because we really wanted to characterize Jason. We didn't want to feel like you were playing a, an empty shell. We really wanted the people, I, 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 definitely at the start of the game to really get to understand and have empathy for what Jason is going through as as you go through it at the same time so you understand that you know he's 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 nervous he's lost he's alone and he, he needs to find his friends so you care about the friends as well otherwise yeah. there's really no reason to be on the island